The 76 leaderboard is sponsored by 76 Gas, provided in Hawaii by locally owned Midpac Petroleum. Here you see the division leaders in the NC Division I. Uh, Florida Gators with 27 and 1. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane at 30 and 2. Northern Iowa's only lost two. Rainbow Wahine have only lost two. And the American Eagles, who lost to UCLA today in five, are 29 and two. It's also upsetting 13 seeded LSU tonight, so they continue to advance in the NCAA tournament. Another interesting stat, the University of Washington this year, 21 and five when they win the first set. If they lose the first set, they're 0 and three. Jim McLaughlin's also had quite a record uh, in the NCAA when holding opponents to under 200. He's 19 and 0. But I don't think he's going to do that to Hawaii tonight. Hawaii hitting 265 right now to Washington's 292. So Hawaii rotating back to their normal starting rotation. We talked about that at the beginning of the first set with Kanani Danielson starting in the middle back row position. Now they're moving Kanani Danielson to her normal left front position to see if they can score as many points as they can up at the top of this set with Kanani in the front row. They go to her right away. She puts up a perfect pass. And Hewitt hits the ball off the block. Nice little slide maneuver by Brittany Hewitt. Hawaii goes up, one zip. And Hewitt seems to always show up during the big time matches. We've seen it earlier in the year against USC, but Hewitt looks strong, healthy, and very confident going up there against the Washington block. That time there, Kanani Danielson being called for the net violation, something we saw, saw a lot of last night between the match between Washington and Michigan. Danielson followed through a little bit too eagerly with her forearms getting the top of the cable. Kelsey Dunaway from Bainbridge Island, Washington, a 6'2 sophomore, serving specialist. She's picking on Danielson right now, and Danielson answers with a pretty good pass. Nice swing from the outside. Here's Munoz. She gets dug up by Kai Hue. Out of the back row comes Satele. She can't put it down. Munoz again over the block. And Danielson that set a little bit wide for her. She tries to do a tip shot. She saw the block well formed and just came up short. Point Huskies. Well, credit Elizabeth Kaihui again for phenomenal defense. 13 digs already for Kaihui. She averages, by the way, 4.5. So she's triple her normal average. <laughs> Munoz with a good block on that tight pass to the net. Again, Passing, which looks like a fairly simple skill to do in volleyball, actually a very, very difficult one, especially when you get a serving team like the University of Washington. And Dunaway did a nice job coming into that last set and doing a, getting a four-point run, seeing her streak continue as Maeda struggles with another pass. They're calling that bump over the net, over the antenna. Another point for the University of Washington. They go up 4-1 here in set number two. Maeda gets this one up for a good pass. The Huskies right there to catch the tip shot. Carlson from the right, where she's oh so effective, averaging four kills a game, picks up yet another. Her eighth. And Dave Shoji's calling an early timeout with the Huskies up 5 1. Coming up at the end of this match, a player from each team will be selected as the most valuable players. The most valuable player award is sponsored by the Bank of Hawaii. So Dave Shoji during that timeout, I'm sure. And Scott Wong was doing a lot of talking during that last timeout as well. I'm sure uh, we're working on finding a way to do a better job of passing Kelsey Dunaway, who's giving Hawaii fits with her running jump float. Maeda passes that one up, but, but pushes, pushes uh, Mafua way off the court. She tries to get it out to Danielson, and uh, Danielson tries to go over and out. 6-1 Washington, so a substitute for Maeda will be 
Alex Griffiths, they call her Griffey, see if she can lend some stability to the passing pattern. And that's what Hawaii's looking for right now is just one pass. Mafua running all over the court and everybody just loading up for Washington on Danielson because they know that Hawaii's been set there because of the poor passing. Better pass the time by Danielson. They go right back to her and she puts it through. So it looks very simple. All he needs is the pass and Hawaii's able to run that offense. But until Hawaii can really settle down in the passing department and you know get things going there, Hawaii's gonna be struggling all night there. We can see Danielson threading the needle right through the seam of the Washington block. Buffoon with the serve, and Roland with a step-out move. She had a huge night last night, seven kills, hit 500, had five blocks, and she's doing the same thing tonight. She's got four kills in six tries, no errors, hitting 667. Bianca Rowan putting on a show. And Hawaii cannot serve the libero for Washington when they have the opportunity to serve the ball. They have to create some points. By serving Carlson, making her work, serving Becky Perry and being a little bit more strategic about where they're placing this ball instead of giving free balls right to the libero. We'll see if Danielson picks on one of the other passers as opposed to serving it right in the middle of the court. So she serves it to Perry. Munoz on the outside, dug up by Kai Hue. Here's a chance for Hoy. And Weber hits it off the block and out. Hoy got a little two-point run going here after the Danielson kill and then the Weber kill. Weber hitting 429, picking up her fourth kill after another great dig by Elizabeth Kai Hue, who now has 14 digs. But again, a serve right at the libero. That's called serving right in their lap. Not much movement in the ball. Yeah. Dave shows you'd like to see Kanani just unload in one of those jump serves and have a little more movement on it. I mean, the setter Haglin is right there. She didn't move at all, had all three options to set. Whereas Hawaii has been struggling just to get a pass up. There's a good pass by Kai Hui. So Telly gets blocked. Weber keeps alive. Orlandini with a nice pass. And this time, Roland gets snuffed at the net by, looked like Michelle Hartong got most of it. Emily, Emily, Hartong. Emily Hartong got most of it. And also, also there to help was Chantil Satelli, a right side blocker who kind of filled in the seam and took away her place. So Kai Hui back to serve. Kai Hui with 14 gigs already on the night. We mentioned how aggressive she's been back there. Had a little nice set up from the outside to Perry. Another free ball chance for Washington. Step out maneuver, Roland. And Roland scores yeah, again. Okay, when Bianca Roland gets it going, she's hard to stop. We talked last night about how much she's grown and matured in the last couple of years. And uh, she's really, really become an experienced, solid player in the middle. Good jump float. Waver with a nice pass. Quick 31 set to Hewitt. Free ball for Hawaii. Hawaii's gonna get their chance to run a multiple attack. Satelli rips it cross court, but nice dig by Carlson. Looks like nobody's gonna take a swing at that one. just unloads, either in the seam or maybe even over Brittany Hewitt. I think she went into the inside the block there. The, let's see if on the attacker, she cuts this ball inside the yep. blocker. But Hawaii's first contact, just struggling, even on defense right now. Hawaii cannot get a passable ball in transition, as we see Michelle Weber struggle for that pass. Dave Shoji gets up right away. It looks like he's gonna move the passing pattern around, possibly. They're gonna move Weber over way to the sideline and have Danielson and Kai Hui do most of the passing. They find Weber anyway, right down that sideline. She bumps it over. And Barfield puts it down, and Dave Shoji calls his second and final timeout here in set number two.